here to show you a little demo of black watercolor paper with metallic watercolors. The product I have on hand that I'm using is Royal Talon's black watercolor paper. They're cold press, which is right here. And then I'm also using the Fine Tech metallic watercolors, Doc Martin bleed proof white to give myself a really good dash of rich white color. And then I've also got two Daniel Smith colors here today. I'm using the Fuchsite Genuine, which is a really beautiful seafoam metallic green. And then I'm using the Duochrome Aquamarine, also by Daniel Smith. Wonderful colors. So metallic colors and metallic pigments show up on black paper really, really well. And the pigmentation just sits up on top of that really well and just shows up very nicely. I have pre-drawn my image here. I, of course, love sharks, so I have drawn a hammerhead shark here to paint. So I'm going to start with the dual chrome aquamarine so I can fill in my shark. And all I used was graphite to draw out this image. Of course, we'll be able to cover any of this graphite with the watercolor. And I'm just going to start with all of it here. I'm going to be going over the entire thing. You'll notice how the paper takes on almost a raven wing look to it. And it's because that black background is just really showcasing our metallic pigment so nicely. And I'm not being too fussy about it here because I can refine this much more once I go back into it. I know there are definitely some mixed media papers that are black that can be used um, and some other types of papers. I do advise something made for watercolor because it is so absorbent and it's really made to hold that paint, whereas some other papers will buckle. Royal Talons also makes a really lovely line of metallic pigments, which I'm not using today. I'm instead using the Fine Tech pigments, as well as the Daniel Smith. Another thing I really enjoy about black paper is it's very forgiving. It's very easy to cover up mistakes. It's very simple to kind of conform the painting to something that ends up working for you and really easy to layer color on there. I feel that it's something that's a little bit more forgiving than standard white watercolor paper is. Maybe just because you can hide blemishes a little bit easier. So as I'm finishing up my shark here, I'm just adding the layers of color. And we'll be able to go back in and add more, but as you can see, the pigmentation's really settling well on this black paper. And I'm just gonna go back in and make it a little bit more opaque. That's something that metallic pigments are plenty in, is opacity. It's such a heavy pigment load that they really just do well about sitting on top of that paper and just looking really heavy and lovely. I of course want to get all my texture from my shark as far as all the bumps and ridges and everything he's got going on there. I'm just using a quill nib or a quill uh, brush here by da Vinci which is a really nice synthetic fiber brush and is just super absorbent and has a really nice payload of water here 
but anything that you happen to like. If you're a Sable fan, if you're a fan of really anything of whatever you're using, as long as it's just nicer quality, you should have no problem with it. So let's finish his final fin here. And like I said before, another cool thing about this is that black paper hides graphite really well. Whereas I definitely have to be a little bit more conscientious when I use it with white watercolor paper, just as far as my placement goes. And if I'm using lighter colors that I'm not gonna be able to hide it nearly as well, it is hidden very well on black paper. So I don't worry too much with it. Get this little guy a little more refined here. So I'm gonna go in with the fuchsite here and just add some nice greens, a couple dashes of a little bit of a contrasting color here. This is another thing that is very neat about black paper like this is that it makes your colors that much more dynamic as far as popping out and creating a really interesting, really dynamic effect. Now you can use other colors with it, although the metallics do tend to work the best. Wash also works really nicely on black paper and acrylic inks work really, really well because of their polymer base. Give my little Sharky a little bit of extra color there. Now I'll show you once I get to the white, how cool that can look, especially when you're making bubbles. It looks really fantastic, especially against darker backgrounds or again, black paper, but really any dark background it looks really fantastic on. Flush him out a little bit. So let's go in with some of the pearl silver here. And again, this is the Fine Tech Dry Pats of Pearl Watercolor. They are very pigmented, which you'll be able to see very soon. And I'm just gonna create a little bit of a, a wave look here. And again, they're so pigmented that they're even covering up the duochrome colors here by Daniel Smith. And the more you saturate those and more you pick those up, of course, the more payload of paint that you're going to get. And I kind of like to let this just do its own thing. Again, I'm trying to create the illusion of water and the illusion of a little bit of chaos here. So that's just allowing it to do something of its own thing. We can even add a few dashes of more substantial pigment here. And you'll notice I'm not really going for tightness here. I'm definitely going for a little bit more loose quality of painting and letting the material do the job, which of course is what I want it to do.
So add a little bit of this kind of bronzy gold here. Now these colors can be found individually and bought individually. They can also be bought in a pack like this right here. And what's really neat about that is you can buy them in like colors um, or complementary colors, kind of like these pearl metallic golds and silvers are, or you can buy them in colors that are individual as far as violets and greens and blues. So that just, you know, opens up a little bit of opportunity as far as maybe catering to a specific type of material that you're after. So I want to go in and do a little bit of definition here. And this is where I'm going to add my whites in. And this goes very far, so be aware of that. As you can see, it's extremely opaque. And I want this paint to kind of do its own thing here. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more dimension by spraying this paint on here. Before I do this though, I'm gonna go in with my pen and I'm going to touch up my shark. Give him his little eye here. Now the pen I'm using is a Hybrid Technica and that is a India ink based pen so it won't bleed when I'm done here. So of course I need to have his eye refined and I also need to go in and give this little guy a couple gills. What's cool about these pens, they're a metal point, so they're kind of like a technical pen, a disposable technical pen, and they help scrape up that paint here. So we're really actually not only getting a little bit of ink in it, but we are exposing the paper underneath. And I can get a little bit more line work, a little bit more hash work if I want that, which let's face it, he's a shark, so make him look a little bit battle worn. <laughs> I find that these pigments dry very quickly as well, and in fact, maybe a little bit quicker than standard watercolor. I'm gonna make this a little rougher around the edges by adding some hatching and cross hatching here. Just giving my shark a little bit more dimension. Now, of course, I'm going to spray a little bit of white in here, a little bit of a pearl white. And I'm gonna achieve that by picking up a little bit of white pigment, adding it to my palette here, and then throwing a little bit of a seafoam green here. So it doesn't look so out of place, a little bit more muted. And you do wanna cut that with a bit of water. Your goal is to be able to achieve something that will actually flick and spray on your paper. So there you go. That is just a short tutorial on how to use the black watercolor paper, especially with your pearlized pigmentations. If you have any questions, again, please just post below or contact us at Spokane Art Supply. Thanks. Bye.